They say the promise of unguarded riches is more manipulative than any other force. Deep inside the dread wastes, it is rumored the tomb of a tyrant from eons past has resurfaced and the mad dash to claim its treasure has begun. It's unclear what is actually more dangerous, the tomb of the tyrant or all the adventurers backstabbing and killing each other to reach its entrance. Instead of fighting with the mobs, you call in a favor from one of your old adventuring friends the renowned Archmage Gale. As you pick your way through the throngs to Gale's tower, you wonder what could lie ahead. Is the tomb a death trap? Is it a simple smash and grab? Your thoughts are interrupted by the opening of Gale's tower door. Hello, friend. I assume you're here on business? Correct. I need to get to that tomb in the Dread Waste before the masses eliminate all possibility. That tomb is a dangerous place. It's rumored the tyrant never truly sleeps. You pull your Vorpal Sword slightly from its sheath, letting Gale see the unmistakable red and black blade before you sheathe it. I just need a ride. The sword can do the talking if things go south. <sighs> I hope you're right. I can get you within half a mile of the tomb. Any closer and you might get punted somewhere else. You both head inside Gale's tower and secure the door. Gale starts chanting the familiar words of a teleport spell. Any advice before I go? Gale dons the tiniest of grins. Nothing you don't already know. There is a sudden whoosh as the world around you disintegrates, forcing you through time and space. You emerge breathless in a horrific wasteland covered in nightmare fuel. The plants in this region bleed a disgusting ooze that has similar effects to demonic ichor. A single drop can horribly disfigure your body. The animals in the region are immune to the ooze's effects, but while few and far between, they are incredibly dangerous. You make out the faint sign of an outcropping half a mile to the east. The stones have recently been shifted. No time like the present. Stepping gingerly between the corrupted plants, you are relieved to find a mostly overgrown trail with a safe space in its dead center. You break into a fast jog, trying to close the distance to the tomb. The tomb itself is ominously still, though the slab sealing the entrance has been broken. It seems you are not the first to have come. Curses! You gingerly step over the broken seal and look around inside. There. In front of you is a glorious treasure hoard of more riches than you imagined possible, all contained in a small square island surrounded by dried up moats. In the middle of the treasure area is a pedestal that contains a skull with some of the most precisely cut gems you've ever seen. They alone will be a fortune. Enough, perhaps, to pay for your retirement. We'll be taking that treasure, scum! You whirl around, your hand snapping to your Vorpal Blade's hilt. In the entrance is a group of five rough-clad adventurers. You know there are dangers here in the tomb, but you haven't had the chance to explore it thanks to these idiots. Good luck! You go invisible and creep to the side, taking great satisfaction in watching the interloper's confusion. Where did she go? Oh, don't matter, boss! Let's get the treasure and get out! Displaying their incredible inexperience, the adventurers walk forwards into the tomb, barely examining anything. They pass single file through the moats without incident, until the leader touches a gold coin on the edge of the treasure island. That's not funny! Stop this now! Oh, uh, boss, that's not us! Okay, stupid. If it's not you, who is it? Well, to those who cometh here, a feast where dead ones dine. You've left your home to find my tomb, and now your souls are mine. Oh, uh, boss, I didn't sign up for no witchcraft! Silence! Grab the treasure and let's get out of here. You watch as the adventurers run forward and stuff bags full of gold coins. Though you notice there is a red glistening above the empty moats. Its consistency is eerily similar to blood. Suddenly, your attention is redirected by the screams of horror and pain as the members of the group suddenly fall backwards, blood pouring from every orifice. The blood trickles upwards, combining with that on the ceiling. The coins slowly reemerge from the now unattended packs and re rejoin the pile. The tomb is again quiet, save for the ever-present trickling of blood, which has started dripping onto the jeweled skull. Welcome back to a Compendium of Monsters. This week's entry, 
the Demi Lich. Before we continue, please make sure you've subscribed to my channel. It helps me out a lot. Demi Liches are either a challenge level 18 or a challenge level 20, tiny sized undead. They have an armor class of 20, hit points of 80, a speed of 0 feet, and a hovering speed of 30 feet. They do not have average hit points. Their will to survive is so strong that they automatically receive the maximum possible hit points. Demi Liches have true sight out to 120 feet, but cannot speak any languages. They have remarkably high saving throws for their intelligence, wisdom, and charisma scores, plus 16, plus 12, and plus 16 respectively. To put this into perspective, let's say you're playing a paladin with a charisma score of 20, which is a plus 5, and you're in a group of 4 adventurers at level 13. Your proficiency bonus is plus 5 at this level. So to calculate your spell save DC, we'll add 8 plus 5 plus 5 to get 18. The Demulich just needs to roll above a 1 to save against your banishment spell or any other spells that require charisma saves. Demi Liches are immune to almost all conditions present in Dungeons & Dragons. They are unaffected by these conditions specifically. Charmed, deafened, exhaustion, frightened, paralyzed, petrified, poisoned, prone, and stunned. To make matters worse, Demi Liches are immune to necrotic, poison, psychic damage, as well as weapon damage from non-magical weapons. They resist! damage from magical weapons. You got that nice plus three sword? Might want to put it away and start using spells. Oh wait, but you're not safe with spells either. Demi Liches have the avoidance trait, which allows them to take half damage if they fail on a saving throw and no damage if they succeed on a saving throw. It gets better as their three legendary resistances allow them to choose to succeed on a saving throw they failed. It gets worse. Oh, much worse. For their actions, Demi Liches can do two things, howl and life drain. With their howl, the Demi Lich emits a blood curdling shriek that affects creatures within 30 feet of it, which need to succeed on a constitution saving throw of 15 or immediately fall to zero hit points. If you're successful on your save, you're merely frightened until the end of your next turn. This ability has a recharge of five or six, giving a one third chance to recharge every round. A Demi Lich can use Life Drain every round if it pleases, which allows it to target up to three creatures within 10 feet. These creatures must succeed on a constitution saving throw of 19 or take 6d6 necrotic damage. The Demi Lich gains hit points equal to the total damage dealt to all targets. Let's say there are three targets and they all fail their saves against Life Drain. If you take just the average damage of 66, it's 21. The Demi Lich recovers 63 hit points in a single turn. This thing still has three legendary actions. If you don't know what these are, the main purpose of legendary actions is to allow a creature to act at the end of a different creature's turn. Most creatures get to use three legendary actions, but some have one, and I currently know of one creature that has five legendary actions. She's a goddess, if that helps. For one legendary action, a Demi Lich may fly up to half its flying speed or it may magically create a cloud of dust. This cloud of dust swirls around the Demi Lich and causes creatures within 10 feet to attempt a constitution saving throw of 15 or be blinded until the end of the Demi Lich's next turn. A creature that saves against the blinding effect is only immune to it until the end of the Demi Lich's next turn. For two legendary actions, a Demi Lich can use its energy drain, which forces creatures within 30 feet of a Demi Lich to attempt a constitution saving throw of 15 or take 3d6 damage that also reduces their maximum hit points by the same amount. If this damage reduces you to zero hit points, you're dead. For three legendary actions, a Demi Lich can use its Vile Curse which targets a single creature within 30 feet. This creature must attempt a wisdom saving throw of 15 or have disadvantage on attack rolls and saving throws until the curse is removed. You can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of your turns and end the curse on a success, but remember, you now have disadvantage to save against it. Better ask someone for a remove curse and quickly. All Demi Liches have lair actions and traits, which increase their challenge level from 18 to 20 if they're encountered in said lair. Demi Liches have three lair actions. They can make the lair tremble and knock adventurers prone. They can create an anti-magic field, or they can negate nearby creatures ability to heal within 30 feet of it. Demi Liches cannot use the same lair action twice, which is bad but also good considering the anti-magic field effect negates magical weapons as well as spells. A Demi Lich also has three layer traits and might have one or all in effect at any given moment. They can cause non-evil creatures entering their layers to take a one-time 3d10 
necrotic damage. They can cause monsters in the lair to have advantage on saving throws against being charmed or frightened and against features that turned undead, and or they can ward their lair against the magical travel of creatures the Demi-Lich has not authorized. If a Demi-Lich is destroyed, the effects fade over 10 days. If you're a disciple of one of the most powerful liches in existence, looking at you, Asarak, you gain an additional lair action so long as you're a Demi-Lich. Trap Soul. A creature within 30 feet must attempt a charisma saving throw of 19 or vanish with its equipment, appearing inside one of the Demi Lich's embedded skull gems. If you succeed on the save, you'll take 7d6 necrotic damage and you'll get trapped anyways if this reduces you to zero hit points. Once trapped, you have 24 hours for someone to break you out, literally, or your soul is wiped from existence, as the soul is fed to the Demi Lich's phylactery, which restores their Lich body. The soul gems can only be destroyed if the Demi Lich has been killed, be it temporarily or permanently. How are Demi Liches created? Well, there are two schools of thought. One is that a Lich has the innate ability to become a Demi Lich by being lazy and not feeding their phylactery with enough souls to sustain their body. The other is that a Lich must pursue Demi Lichdom, which involves yet another expensive, dangerous ritual and another chance to obliterate yourself. Personally, I believe it's an innate ability, but I throw in the added bonus that a Lich can transform into a Demi Lich once its Lich form is defeated, adding a horrific second phase to an already difficult battle. Tomb of Horrors, spoilers ahead. My players have encountered a Demi Lich only once so far, and the journey to encounter that Demi Lich almost killed them. After saving a hapless airship crew from murderous zombie Garalons, the party was dragged into a living dream sequence where they explored and contended with the one and only Tomb of Horrors. After many memorable moments, including Barakas's reduction to ash and the Trixie Efriti, they found themselves standing in the richest treasure vault they've ever seen. Lying on a bench near most of the treasure was a gem-endowed skull covered in cobwebs. This skull is nothing less than the Demi-Lich form of Asarak the Eternal, waiting for a single player to merely tap his skull so he can consume their souls. Happily, my players use extreme caution when extracting the treasure and left without much issue, other than the zombie Tyrannosaurus Rexes, of course. Anyways, what do you all think of Demi-Liches? Let me know in the comments below. As always, thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that subscribe button and smash that like button. I'll see you all next time.